Remember, babes, there's nothing moral about work, and you are have basic human rights to food, water, shelter, comma, and health care, among other things. <sighs> there are so many errors with this, but there is one thing you need that isn't mentioned here, something that is almost argued to be a basic human right within most societies where it is provided, and I highly recommend you get yourself some. It's called education, Miss Edison. <coughs> right, so now that I've gotten that little error out of my system, and I know a number of people agree with me, simply the first error alone was enough of a reason to stop, but I really wanted to drive my point home. The subject of today's video is a recent sentencing that took place in Texas. Now the crime committed is pretty heinous sick. Hell, if it happened in my country, the sentence would not have been severe at all. It would have been, well, it's mental health issues, so she'll be given a suspended sentence and probably then given psychiatric assistance. If it was a single male that committed this crime, depending on his race and culture and faith, because they don't all have to be the same after all, would depend on the severity of the sentence. Let's say he was a school teacher. He's done. He's toast. He's in prison. He's done for life. If he's a meth addicted singer, yeah, he's done for life. If he's just a single male that's white, he's done for life. But if he's of a certain faith, you know which one I'm talking about, that somehow never gets talked about in the news, or properly investigated because the police are afraid of being called racist, or because then the police will decide it is too sensitive and might affect the community negatively, then we know that the sentence can possibly vary, or if the sentence is severe, you only ever hear about it on Breitbart, to the people who are now saying, Omegon, you're rambling, I know, it is my privilege and I'm well entitled to do so, which I'm going to do because I like to. It's kind of weird for a guy who struggles to structure one sentence to waffle on for three minutes plus before even getting to the title of the article. But there's a reason for that. See, in our society there is a crime. There is one particular crime that is taboo, and yet somehow, in differing countries, it is treated a different way depending on a certain circumstance, where some will be very public, and there'll be outcry, and there'll be outrage, and the sentence will be either lacklustre, underwhelming perhaps, or accurate. My view is, if you touch a child, or pimp your two-year-old daughter out, you belong in a prison cell for what I can only deem to be a whole life term, plus infinity. You're going to burn in a very special level of hell, a level they reserve for child molesters, and people who talk at the theatre. And I don't mean life term 25 years. I mean your natural lifespan, however long it is until the day you die, plus infinity. That's a, I'm sure that's an actual number somewhere. <sighs> I'm joking. Just the infinity. Now, just to be clear, the nature of what this woman's crime is, I would put on par with sex offenders. Although I would argue that this one is slightly more severe considering the nature of it. And just to give a contrast, by the way, on how the UK treats, for example, paedophiles, or sex offenders that commit certain acts that cross the line from simply being a paedophile, to that of what happens in Texas, we can go to an article from a place in Leicester, where Henry Michael Pinney was jailed for eight years at Leicester Crown Court. What did he do? He sexually groomed 26 boys by posing as a teenage girl online. What did the mother do, you now wonder? She was sentenced to 40 years for pimping out her daughter, I think I've already said that. I think the man should have gotten as much of a sentence. Quite frankly, he should have gone to jail for just as long. And I know there is a line between being a paedophile and a sex offender, but a lot of articles, a lot of journalists, a lot of people seem to forget that being a paedophile isn't itself the crime. Acting on those desires then doesn't make you a paedophile, it makes you a sex offender and a paedophile but the sex offender part takes precedent. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, a 25-year-old woman from Texas has been sentenced to 40 years behind bars for attempting to sell her two-year-old daughter for a sex act for $1,200 to an undercover police officer who impersonated a willing paedophile. I feel sorry for that police officer, 
and I'm assuming the $1,200 was either for drugs or rent. If only Wonga existed there. In a carefully devised sting operation, targeting child exploitation and abuse, led by Detective Surratt, I think, of the Montgomery County Precinct 1 Constable's office, officers managed to track down and arrest 25-year-old Sarah Peters, who in February this year planned to sell her two-year-old daughter online to someone desiring to engage in sex acts with the child for a fee of $1,200. It's nice to know that your daughter was worth so little to you. Now imagine this happening in the United Kingdom. She needed 1200 She must not be getting child support payments from the father. That must be why. Let's blame the father, but also suspend the sentence and tell everyone she's going to be a fantastic parent and let her keep the child. United Kingdom, everyone. I'm not even joking. Once Peters arranged to pimp out her daughter, she took the child to the drop-off point in Conroe, Texas, north of Houston. When she and the toddler arrived at the Greyhound bus station, she was immediately arrested by the Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force and the Department of Homeland Security officers. I hope that child is sent far, far away. If the child has grandparents that want to be in that child's life and they didn't know about this, and they can prove themselves to be the best possible grandparents, possibly the child can go to them, or the father, depending on his status. On Thursday, Texas Judge Phil Grant sentenced the woman to 40 years in prison on promoting a sexual performance by a child, attempted human trafficking, and promotion of prostitution of a child charges, after Peters pleaded guilty to the crimes. I'm assuming the only reason he pleaded guilty was for a softer sentence. Doesn't Texas still have the death penalty? Oh, and after a little digging, I found out that Texas statute books still provide the death penalty for aggravated sexual assault committed by an offender previously convicted against a child under 14. So sadly, this woman doesn't quite qualify. But I'm sure there are many people that think she should be nonetheless. Hell, the DA might have anyway. One of the major takeaways from this is that the woman who is now in prison won't be eligible for parole until 2038, by which time she will be 45. And at that point, it will be nigh on impossible for her to have another child, which I'm okay with. I'm kind of hoping she has to register as a sex offender. Kind of. I do think she should tell people if she's ever released what she did. Then again, that's going to weigh in her conscience regardless. Now, there are a number of people I have heard over the years that have argued that people who go to prison should still be allowed to have children. I think this is entirely determined. I believe this is something that can only be determined truly on the crime the person committed. If it's a life sentence, the answer is no. You made the choice to commit the crime, therefore you are there for life. If it means when you leave prison you are no longer able to conceive, there is your punishment. Enjoy it. If your crime is something that okay, um, if your crime is something that only keeps you in prison for a couple of years, there's still a chance depending on your age. But with this woman, as far as I'm aware, she only had one child. And look what she did to her. I would not want someone like this to be in the position where they could have another child and run the risk of harming them. Good luck trying to explain to your cellmate how you're in prison for trying to pimp out your two-year-old, someone who trusted you. It is, after all, what you did, the ultimate betrayal of trust, because your child, regardless, would do as you tell them, because two-year-olds minus the terrible twos will follow your command, and that is a betrayal of trust. One can only hope your child grows up never knowing what you did and what you were almost successful in doing. So anyway, that all aside, and bitch, I hope you rot in prison. I hope everyone has a lovely Sunday, and thank you all for listening. I've got downs. In your ass. Imagine my shock. <laughs>